In this video, we will be learning about OpenAI's embeddings. An embedding is a list of vectors and floating point numbers, and the distances between these suggest high relatedness and low relatedness if the distances are large. This is very useful for doing search, clustering, recommendations, and many more. OpenAI's cookbook repository is a perfect example of how to load a dataset and turn it into an embedding space. It's very really clear, simple, and will get you going in no time. I have already copied this code and got it working in my Visual Studio code. First, you will have to do all the necessary imports, then set your OpenAI API key. Then you select, here we are assigning an embedding model, text embedding A-002, which is the latest and greatest. Embedding encoding is set to CL100K. This is the encoding for text embedding A-002, set max. 8,000 tokens because the maximum for text embedding ADA is 8,191. And then we're just loading the Amazon reviews data. The link for the data set is at the OpenAI's cookbook. You can actually download it. I have changed this name to just reviews.csv. And then we simply just read it and pick the necessary columns that we would like to have. And now we just print the first two column rows. Then we are cutting down the size of the data set to a thousand and we are actually getting a token count we're using tokens for those reviews using tick token and then we are actually eliminating any which is a lot more than max tokens and we are actually trying to get a thousand reviews at most after that this line does all the magic we are just getting embeddings from the engine, which was defined as ADA002. And then we just simply save it to a CSV file. So let's run this. As you see, we first print the first two rows, as we instructed right here, print tf.head. After which, it takes a couple of minutes for a thousand rows of Amazon food review data to be processed and sent back from OpenAI's ADA API, including a column for the embeddings. After the embeddings process is done, you get back a write to a CSV file, find food reviews with embeddings, which is 1K. It's pretty difficult to read, but at the very end, as you see, we have the embeddings. There's actually a really cool tool to make this more readable. I'll, show, I'll tell you about that here in a second. But if you go all the way to the end, we get to the embeddings column, and these are the embeddings for each one of the reviews. This is, there's about 1500 dimensions of this stuff. So it's pretty long, but this has all the information that is necessary to do a super quick search and meaningful search as well. The extension I'm talking about is CSV to table. I have already have this installed and it really turns CSV files into more readable format. Take a look at it. I'll put the Amazon Fine Food Reviews with embedding CSV file to my Patreon if anybody is interested in downloading it. Let's start with a hands-on example doing code search with an OpenAI's cookbook repository using embeddings. Once we convert OpenAI's cookbook repository into an embedding space, we will be able to do search for completions, API tests, fine-tuning, and find common suffixes or anything else for that matter. If you want to follow along, you will need to download OpenAI's cookbook. The link that is provided in the code is incorrect. You'll need to go to OpenAI's cookbook and download the zip repository and then unzip it and then place it in your root directory. If you're unsure what your root directory is, you can just simply print it in the code and then place your unzip cookbook repository at that location. I'll put a link for the cookbook in the description and also for the embeddings documentation because all the some of the all the examples we're going to go through is actually present here and it'll actually take you the correct cookbook page. However, we're going to be examining some of those examples here anyway. Let's run this code and see what it does before examining it. It first finds all the pi files in that repository, then extracts all the functions that it can find. After that, prints an example of the embeddings. After the embeddings are returned from the OpenAI's ADA API. And after that, we are actually making a search. The first search is for completions API tests. And it's trying to find the top three most relevant functions within the functions that it had embedded. And here, this is the first one, the second one, and the third one. The first part of the code is responsible for walking in that root directory 
and then actually finding every Python file which ends with .py or .ipymp and then extracts all the functions and then after that sends them to OpenAI with, to get the embeddings with the engine text embedding ADA002 which is the latest one and then assigns it to a DF. After that we are going to compare our search sentence with cosine similarity to the entire DF and we'll be returning the most likely results. Here we are actually making a call for completions API test and completions API test first goes to, to OpenAI's API to convert this into a vectorized form and then we just simply do a search by over iterating and doing cosine similarity over it and then the results are returned. You can find this code in OpenAI's cookbook repository under code search but I had to make quite a few changes to it to get it to be able to get it working. One change I had to make was regarding an error about Unicode and I had to introduce this so that we can ignore the errors and the encoding is set to UTF-8 and the original file was only searching for .py files but the OpenAI's cookbook repository's files are mostly consisting of, consisting of IPYMB files so I also had to account for them and then combine those files at the end. You also will have to set your OpenAI API key. So this is the code in a nutshell to walk through all of OpenAI's repository and actually extract all functions and then embed all those functions and to be able to perform search on it. I will have this file and other files that we're going to look at in my Patreon for my Patreon supporters, but you can actually copy it from the video or try to get it working for you from the cookbook as well. I will put a link to my Patreon in the description. Next, we're going to look at visualizing the embeddings in two dimensions again from OpenAI's cookbook. I got this code working in my Visual Studio code. It's pretty straightforward. First we load the data, then we convert all of the data into a list of floats, which is a matrix. And then this is a high dimensional data, 1500 dimensions, and we have to convert it into two dimensions. And this is what the TSNE does. After that, we just do a matplotlib plot of it. And if we run this, we get to see a two dimensional representation of the embedding space. We will take a look at the clustering graph next and see more details about it. Next, we will be clustering this data using k-means from scikit-learn. We will all plot it and also examine it by pulling few examples from each clusters and allow GPT-3 to actually give a description of the cluster itself. So we first load our data with the embeddings and then we turn it into a NumPy array. After that, we import k-means and apply k-means clustering on it. And then again, we are using TSNE to reduce the high dimensionality into two dimensions. And after that, we are plotting it. Let's run the code until now and see what happens. I have placed a breakpoint right here where we're importing OpenAI, which is the beginning of the rest of our code. Now, if I run this in debug mode using the debug option here or by simply pressing F5, then our code execution will stop right at this breakpoint. Let's begin. We got our plot back with four clusters. We had SK means to do four clusters, as you can see, one, two, three, and four. Here it is in large full screen. We had defined in the beginning that we wanted four clusters, and our code had paused right when it hit the breakpoint. We can, we're going to continue its execution after we review the code. Here we are importing OpenAI and we are setting our OpenAI key. We are going to be taking five reviews from each cluster. After that, we're going to be sending it to TextDaVinci003 with this prompt. What do, you, what do the following customer reviews have in common? And then include the reviews. After that, we will print the reviews and what the GPT-3 thinks is a description for those clusters but I've also modified this code so that we will also be saving it to result.txt. So let's run the rest of our code now. As you see, we are printing the GPT-3 thought of it, but the previous prints have been erased. So let's just take a look at the results. Here we can see that GPT-3 responded for the first five from the cluster. All of the reviews are positive and discuss the quality of the tea. And for the second cluster, it says all of the re reviews are positive and discuss the benefits of the product. 
And for the last one, it says, all other reviews are positive despite some reservations or criticism. We have learned how we can use ADA embeddings with clustering and OpenAI GPT-3 to actually describe the clusters themselves. Next, let's take a look at regression. Here we will be deploying regression using the embeddings. Regression means predicting a number rather than one of the categories. We will predict the score based on the embedding of the review's text. We will be using random forest regressor. We are importing train test split so we can have train and testing data, mean square error and mean absolute error. Once we run this, we will use our CSV file with embeddings to predict the test review scores based on only its text description. This takes a minute, as you can see, it's pretty slow building 100 trees with the random forest regressor. I'll be back when this is done. After the random forest regressor is done, we get its results on the training set with a mean average error of 0 0.51 and on the test set of mean average error of 1.08. Here, the author explained that we can see that the embeddings are able to predict the scores with an average error of 0.53 per score prediction. This is roughly equivalent to predicting half of the reviews perfectly and half of by one star. You could also train a classifier to predict the label or use the embeddings within an existing ML model to encode pre-text features. So this is all pretty cool. I have also looked at classification, recommendation, user product embeddings, and zero-shot classification, which we will not be covering in this video. You can find all these examples at the OpenAI's embeddings documentation. I'll put the link in the description. But I will also have all the files which I got working and upload them to my Patreon for my Patreon supporters. I'll put my Patreon link in the description. I will also put the fine food reviews with the embeddings there as well for anyone who would like to download it. Well, thank you for watching. Please give it a like and subscribe if you are enjoying the content. I have created a Discord channel for like-minded individuals. I'll put the link in the description and hope to see you there. Take care.